are you players in the streaming media are changing the video entertainment landscape? Um, this is uh, really what I'm going to be examining today. Is really a, what we see as a dual threat to, to, to traditional video entertainment. And we've seen that that's really coming from uh, two areas that are essentially squeezing traditional video entertainment. And that's video on demand, and not just video on demand, but it's truly video on demand coming of age. And what we're seeing is a reinvigorated uh, piracy sector. Um, and so we conducted a major study um, across eight markets in the region, um, 15,000 online interviews uh, with our partner Manny from SSI, and also from also uh, 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 co-funded co by Media Partners Asia. We conducted in Australia, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Taiwan, and Thailand. And um, I'm going to focus a little, a little more on Singapore, but put it at, in, a, in some context with the region. Uh, but essentially what we're seeing in Singapore is the emergence of a number of generalized and general entertainment players <coughs> and very specific players. Um, and they cover the gamut from subscription video on demand, uh, major players such as Netflix, um, advertising video on demand, such as Catch Play. We have what we call, um, uh, well, the, the telco providing services such as Startup Go, Singtel Go, and then Singtel Cast, which is uh, a, a telco based platform, along with very niche players like Rugby Pass um, and, uh, and the emergence very recently of the Amazon Prime Video. So, for a relatively small market, it's already a very, very crowded. Uh, space. Um, if, you look at, uh, if you look at how many people are actually using these services, but if you look at 18 to 64 year olds, 1.6 million people are currently registered with one of these services. Um, which, given the amount of time they've been in the market, is a, is a phenomenal growth. Uh, and, and, it's so, and since we did this study, which is very, very fresh, it's only uh, a month or so old. We've seen Fox Plus launch a major platform as well. And that's a big number, but one of the issues that we see uh, in the sector is very, very high churn. Um, and, and some experience uh, much higher churn than others. An example I would give is in, in Indonesia. I won't name the provider, but it's a major, a major regional um, uh, subscription video on demand service. Which, has currently around a million subscribers. It's actually, in the time it's been around, it's actually lost as many subscribers as it currently has. And so this is obviously the primary driver of things like that. Like this is, is the availability of content but very quickly, especially if you're using get through content. Um, and so whilst it does represent a major threat to the status quo of uh, traditional um, TV, whether that be broadcast or free to air, TV. It's, it, it, is, it does suffer from its own uh, unique problems, the kind of problem that pay TV suffered from a long time ago and perhaps beginning to accelerate now. But that 60% um, is the equivalent of 1.6 million uh, Singaporeans aged 18 to 64. So it's all very, very big numbers. Again, and that's with churn. So that's a, it, it's perhaps growing slightly on quarter by quarter, but it's remaining stable at around 1.6 million. If we compare that to um, other markets, we'll see Singapore's pretty much there uh, near the top. Um, it's second only to Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a very interesting market, and I'll, I'll show you some data that makes it demonstrate its interest, so how interesting it is. It's 72% using one of these uh, either subscription video on demand services or advertising video on demand services. And this excludes YouTube. YouTube is so ubiquitous that in fact uh, you have to take out the data, uh, otherwise nothing makes any sense. Um, so this is this is excluding YouTube users. This is essentially services uh, where people have to either have to pay or go on a free trial and ultimately pay, but essentially they're all registered users. Um, and then we see Australia, which is uh, our third, in terms of penetration, our third biggest market. What's in 
interesting here, though, is Indonesia, which is obviously only 10%, but it's such a massive market in volumetric terms of skew. Uh, and bear in mind, PTV has been around for, uh, in, in the region for well as long as I've been doing research for 25 years and probably longer. It's still, it's still only reached 10 to 12% in Indonesia. And so in a very short period of time, the subscription video on demand has been around, it's already reached that level. Again, all suffering from their own churn issues, but that actually creates, uh, I think, an opportunity for the, for the traditional data players as well. Just in terms of um, the, the, the size and who the major players are, uh, with a domestic uh, media core uh, service um, around 33.5% of Singaporeans are using that. Um, that's a combination of their, uh, it's their freemium service, so it's part free and part. So we have obviously data on how many people are paying for that, and it's in that level of detail. And then Netflix is just marginally ahead of the, the um, PCCW player view. The view shows essentially Korean, Korean, Korean and some Japanese drama. But that's just only marginally behind Netflix, which is obviously, I think, one of the things that if if you were to look at this chart for other markets, you'd actually see Netflix quite a long way down. And I think while Netflix does a very good job of grabbing headlines, especially in many of the sort of developed markets, uh, with the exception of Singapore, it, it very rarely appears in, in, in the number two spot. We're talking the more likely to be some of the regional SL players such as Hook or iFlix would take that number two spot. Um, and then at the, the end, you can see some of the uh, some of the um, more niche sports players. Um, and then somewhere around the middle, we've got the authenticated services from Star and Singtel. So it, it, it's, a, it's a dynamic market, but it's very, very fast. Uh, it's a changing market in terms of where these guys line up, uh, but it, it is the growth is phenomenal. Just in terms of who's using the service. Um, there is a perception that it's very, you know, oh, what are we going to do with millennials? We're going to lose them forever. They're going to, there's a whole bunch of millennials out there that aren't going to be exposed to traditional media brands. And whilst that is true in certain markets, such as Indonesia, where this would look very, very different, um, actually millennials are under index um, versus their percentage of the population. The biggest proportion, the slightly over index, is our Gen X, the certified and as you can probably expect, um, they are doing this slightly under So it, it's not, it's, it, it's not um, your youngsters, it's really, uh, perhaps about a third of you. In terms of how many people, the number, number of services that people have on average in Singapore, amongst the users, on average is 1.7. This number gets interesting when you look at other markets. If we add in YouTube, that actually goes to the, the 2.5 services. And this is services currently subscribed to and regularly using. In the survey, we can also capture things like uh, frequency of access, average session, etc. But these are people who are, yet are regularly using these other apps, either on their phone, or on their smart TV, or through their their Apple TV or Apple If we look at that in other markets, and there's Singapore again, uh, they've taken out YouTube that uh, is a comparison. And you can see pretty much, for most of the markets, it's very much on a, on a par amongst, yeah, amongst users. Not, not a huge amount of difference. Um, however, in Australia, which is, uh, as we saw, the second uh, biggest market in terms of uh, penetration, we're getting around 2.4 services used on average. But, but as I said, Hong Kong's a very special case. There's a lot of services in Hong Kong. A lot of them are um, from mainland China based. Um, but what is surprising about Hong Kong is many of the services that are available in Hong Kong are also available in Taiwan. And yet, in Hong Kong, we see a massive 5.7 services used. So there's something very unique about Hong Kong. And, and number of services, it's not just the number of services available, because 
again, we see that same number in Taiwan, and they've just had uh, uh, an incredible appetite for video on demand services. Now, here's, if you're in pay TV or traditional media, here I think is the opportunity. Because uh, we also are talking, and this is where I say I think uh, uh, subscription video on demand has come of age. Because of the, when it first uh, started, it was like, I want the latest movies, I want the latest US, US series. That's, that's not the case anymore. People have said, we now want to start seeing lifestyle shows, we now like to see documentaries, we want to see reality. And there's a certain irony in that, because having embraced what consumers now actually want the services to resemble a traditional pay TV package. So, whilst the platform's changed, what's actually the demand being demanded from the consumer is essentially what they already have, just in a different, different and perhaps um, more accessible format. Um, and this is why I say it's a, I think it's an opportunity for pay to be because there is a missing piece that these services need, and they need it to counter what I spoke about earlier, which is their incredible churn. They're churning because they're running out of content, and they're desiring what the tradition is seeing on pay TV. You give it to them, they, that churn starts to slow. So whilst it's seen as a threat, it actually could be a major opportunity for traditional media brands. Now, uh, that, that's, the, as I said, the traditional media is really being squeezed by two areas, and, and piracy is nobody's going to be particularly surprised about. It's been around for a very long time, particularly in Southeast Asia, but not so much in Singapore. Uh, a lot of it's been stamped out. It used to primarily exist with uh, your dodgy DVDs across the war and pick up you know, 20 for 10 bucks. Um, and you're at BitTorrent uh, and that kind of thing. However, um, what we're seeing now and what we're talking about are these kinds of boxes. I'm not doing an advertisement for Cinema Square, but I think everyone knows that's where you can buy them. Um, and they're easily available. They have all the channels from Sing to the Star, a one off annual fee. Some of them are Android boxes, some of them are basically clones of Sing to boxes. And it's all at a fraction of the cost that you normally pay for your pay TV. So, so we, we thought, well, let's try and measure how big a problem this is. Um, now, from a research perspective, it's quite a quite difficult question to ask and get a reason to ask for. But you know, it's uh, our basic premise is most respondents actually want to be truthful, um, if for no other reason than it's actually easier than mine. Um, it, it, it's quicker, especially if you're an online panel. I mean, I'm sure you'll know most respondents want to tell the truth because it takes longer to fill out a survey. You have to think up some imaginary answer. But for piracy, it's tricky. Um, so we've developed a number of ways of trying to get at, at asking different. Um, and the first one is perhaps something that's obvious to many people, but it's a question of secrecy. Uh, sequencing. Um, often, when you when you uh, have surveys that are on difficult subjects, whether they be relationships or sex or uh, piracy, you, you'll get a big introduction, and we're now going to ask you about it really difficult. Your, your answers are really, really important. Um, and surprise, surprise, people don't necessarily give you the right answers or the, or the true answers. Um, so what we do is we sequence these difficult questions in the same way you would ask a question if you were being having a lie detector. I don't know if you've seen the movies when somebody's wired up to a lie detector, but they say, are you, are you married? Is your name answer me? Yes. Are you old? Yes. Um, have you betrayed your country? Yes. I, I mean, no. Uh, and that's how we that's how we deal with that, obviously removing the back button in the survey. And that helps us get over the first hurdle. Um, you could argue that it's a little bit of trickery, but by inserting that question in a place where it's it's used as being quite innocent it helps us. And the other method we developed is asking the question in a way that doesn't imply any personal culpability. And we've called that blame a friend. Um, and you'll see what we mean. This is the, uh, the streaming pirated content data from the region. Now, first of all, the one thing you'll notice is the pirates follow the money. 
in, in the old days, it was Indonesia, massive piracy, the uh, Philippines, massive piracy. But now people are paying the pirates a subscription fee in addition to buying a box. These guys follow the money, and that's why, with the exception of Australia, which is obviously much more tightly regulated, we're seeing really, really uh, runaway piracy in all of the traditional developed markets. Singapore's up there. Now, the way we ask the question, you'll see, do you have one of these? Well, first of all, we call them unofficial, not illegal, which helps us in a way. And then we, we ask them, do you own, own, own one? And we see in Singapore 6% say yes. Do you use a friend, which is the blame the friend question? And then, do you think you're buying one? And so we think the combination of those three questions actually gets us close to what the actual piracy number is. And so piracy is re-emerging and does represent a major threat. So just to close out, what we're looking at those two parts of the story. Um, the video on demand coming of age, it is a double-edged sword for traditional media. I mean, it does provide an opportunity because for them to be sustainable, they need the content that the, tradi the, the traditional players are providing. But in the short term, it's still a major threat. Whereas this reinvigorated piracy is frankly a, a bullet in the head of anybody in traditional media if it's not dealt with. And I just, I, I recently attended a, a, the ACOS conference where I think Mark, who's here from Haswell, although they recently set up a fund in Singapore uh, to try and address this piracy. <coughs> and that is 